spring is here. Well, you're probably wondering what the hell was that mess on my trailer. Well, I'm going to try to give you a quick explanation of that. And uh, I'm going to make it as brief as I can because I'm at the rest area. I had to stop, take a leak, and uh, there's nothing on the way home for uh, refreshments. There's no, you can't celebrate. So this is it. This is a celebration. And uh, so here we go. It started off a garage the next town over from me had that truck sitting out there as a parts truck and it had a full drivetrain in it 5.3 LS transmission transfer case rear end front differential missing some body panels obviously bed and stuff like that was gone so I tried to buy the truck for parts I needed a lot of stuff off of it one main thing I needed right away was that differential for the wife's blue Silverado so no, no, not for sale. Then, all of a sudden, the kid calls me and says, how much you give me for that truck? So, we kind of go back and forth, and uh, of course, there's no cats on it. And, uh, <clears throat> it's got the title, stuff like that. So, anyway... He never can name a price, you know. How much you give me, how much you give me. So, I give him a price. He comes back with a hundred more. I said, I really can't do that. So, we're in negotiation. We're only a hundred dollars apart here. Well, all of a sudden, next day or the day after... Puts a post online. Oh, who needs parts? Pictures of the truck inside the garage. All ripped apart. Everything out of it. Engine, transmission, everything's coming out. I thought we were in negotiation on a deal. And then all of a sudden, that's it. So, as you can understand, I was a... Uh, a little bit discouraged and uh, a little bit angry at that whole thing. So, then, he's got the nerve afterwards to ask me how much I'll give it for, give him for it and go pick up the carcass. Just a cab and a rolling chassis. He said, I ain't, won't give me nothing for it. So, turns out, the kid stripped it, put it outside, figuring that he could get me to come and get it. His dad, who is, you know, the boss of the place, obviously, he says, what the hell, you know, this truck out here, when's it, when's it leaving? We can't have this sitting out here, a place of business. So now he gets a hold of me. Hey, hey, you know, I was just ignoring the other guy. And he says, you know. Uh, it's a, you know, it was out of principle. Like, I'm not, you know. I told him before, I do not buy vehicles without converters. And I certainly do not buy them without engine, transmission, stuff like that. So, in this whole situation, you can see why I was a little bit mad on top of everything. Because I needed a lot of parts.
That was interesting. There was a guy standing there next to a Chevy Silverado at the rest stop. And I kind of thought to myself, man, he looks kind of broke down. But he walked over. He got me. He said, I'll give you 50 bucks. Take my truck. Just give me and my truck a ride up the road. Maybe two miles. The gas station. I guess the U-joint let go or something. It was just sitting in there. Just dangling. But he had someone with tools that was going to help him out. So <clears throat> there you go. 50 bucks roadside service anyway where, where was I here so yeah pretty much I had you know back and forth with the dad a little bit nothing you know nothing heated like or anything like that but you know he's like oh it must have been a misunderstanding because you know he thought you were going to take it. and I said listen I said I, I'm done talking about it you know I we were supposed to make a deal on the whole truck all complete and you know, he just turns around and does that. It was just kind of a stupid, you know, stupid, immature move. And uh, thinks he's going to make all kinds of money off the parts when... And then get me to come take the garbage, you know. It's, it's a little bit aggravating. But, you know, it's times like that where you say... You know, I could be a total ass and I could just say, nope, not coming to get it. But then, you know... I don't want my name thrown in the mud, you know, I don't want somebody talking about me saying, no, I don't call that asshole, you know, he didn't take that fucking truck over there, he wouldn't take a free, free junk truck, you know, and uh, that's basically what it turned into, they said just, you know, take it, and they just want it gone, it's free, whatever, well basically a worthless piece of light iron at that point it's not worth much doesn't weigh anything it's got no value so anyway I made the decision I said you know what I said leave the you know the title and the key in it so I can steer it and uh, I'll come get it out of there tomorrow because they didn't uh, it was a Saturday they weren't working on Saturday so so I went and picked it up and of course, you know, the next morning I get a message from the kid, you know, asking how much did you get for it? You know, and it's like, uh, you know, I'll be lucky by the time I spend gas to get it down there if I get $50 profit. So as I'm towing it home that day on that Saturday, I pick it up. I stop in a park a lot to, uh, you know, take my pictures, you know, because that's, you know, I'm weird like that. Got to take a picture of everything. So, you know, I'm going to make this post and everything and um, about how things went and, you know, how I ended up with this thing on my trailer or whatever. So a guy that I know, another guy from town has got a shop, mostly does snowmobiles, motorcycles, stuff like that. But he pulled in. Hey, what are you doing with that? What are you doing with those doors? Those doors any good? I said, I haven't even looked at it, you know. He looks at the doors and he says, yeah, I need these doors. How much you want for them? I don't know. Maybe like $50, something like that, you know, if you want the door. And the doors weren't too bad. They were definitely usable. I don't know why the kid didn't keep those and sell them. But um, he says, yeah. So I might know somebody that would want to buy that rear end too. It's just an open, you know, it's just a one wheel wonder, uh, you know, 10 bolt. But he's like, uh, I know somebody that needs one. So, so anyway, that was kind of interesting. And uh, he, <clears throat> someone. <clears throat> Car's pulling up here all over the place. Maybe somebody needs another tow. Um, just walking the dog. But, um... So I told him a little bit... Yep, yeah, dogs are out. I'm walking the dog. So I told him a little bit, um... You know, about the story and everything. Uh, what happened. 
And uh, I said, you know, I said, I needed, I really needed that front differential, which the kid would never give me a price on. So I tried to buy that out of the truck. <clears throat> so he goes, you need a front differential for what? I said, the blue truck. So what gears are this? 373. He goes, he goes, oh, I got one sitting right on the floor. I'll trade you for the doors. I, my mind was blown. I'm like, this can't be real. And he said, yeah, and I, guy will probably want to buy the rear end. And he's like, yeah. He's like, if you want, just drop it down at my shop, and uh, I'll take that stuff off. So that's what I did. And um, so a couple of days, you know, we didn't get to it. And, you know, I had to go down there and uh, kind of be like, you know, I don't want to, you know, I don't. So anyway he says if you want he said uh you got the differential out of the other truck is it drivable i said oh yeah we're still driving it it's just sloppy you know it needs one he said well if you want just do it right in my shop right on the lift we'll do it he's like i'll give you a hand and we'll swap it out i said this can't be real Are you kidding me i mean i kind of know this guy but not really that good um so I was like, wow, that, that, that'd be great. So I ended up, he didn't, like I said, you know, took a couple of days to get the doors off, stuff like that. So I ended up going down with the blue truck, put it up on the lift, nice shop, nice and clean, all the nice tools, nice heavy duty impact, you know, good air compressor. He had his worker, a uh, nice guy that works for him. He helped me. We swapped out that front diff in no time, had it back together, and that was done. And that was that's a huge thing, you know, because I was dreading it doing on my back, and you know, obviously to pay somebody to do it, it would have been a decent amount of labor cost. Um, so everything, you know, everything was just going great. So then he says, "Yep." Yeah, now I get a call, I get a couple of calls to pick up some cars, and I'm like, I got one car on Sunday that I actually drove to my house, um, Toyota Corolla, and, uh, that was just drivable, so I didn't need my trailer, but, you know, and then I got two months, you know, I don't want to lose out on cars, so I said, you know, so today, I went down there this morning, I said, yep, you know, yeah, yeah, we got to get that out, so, you know, backing in the bay over there, and, uh, you know, we'll take the, we'll, we'll drop the, you know, pick up the back with the cherry picker, you know, and uh, drop that rear end out, so, right next door to that place is an oil company, and I had been picking up scrap all through the summer from there, and um, they had, like, a bunch of boilers out there, and I just couldn't move them myself, big ones. And uh, they kind of sat through the winter, and I talked to a couple of the guys trying to find out if they had some sort of machine they could help me get those things loaded. Because, you know, when I say I'm going to do something, I want to do it, and I felt like I didn't get the place cleaned up as good as I, you know, needed to. So I had asked a couple of the guys, the drivers, you know, and stuff, and no one could really give me an answer. But I did see a backhoe down there a couple times, so I could never really connect with anyone. They sat there frozen in the snow. So anyway, one of the guys stops by my house right after I left to go down to get my trailer and get the rear end out and get rid of that truck. And I was just going to bring that truck down to the guy and get whatever I could for it. You know, just take it as a loss, whatever. So, well, you know, I got the, the whole differential put in, so that was good anyway. So, I was fine with it. So, he just, he, my wife calls me and says, hey, the guy from the place, you know, the oil company stopped by. He wants to know if you want any of that metal because they're going to load it up and bring it to the dump just for free, just take it to the dump, because they don't mess around, they, they don't have the time or the need for the money to haul it down, you know, to the scrapyard, so, and I guess he knew, obviously knew where I lived, maybe saw my trucks, I don't know, but 
she told him, hey, he's down there right now at Rev Limit, you know, the, um, the other shop, and, uh, He's down there, so, you know, and so anyway, a couple minutes later, he came pulling in, and, hey, hey, you want that, that metal? I said, yeah. So he said, well, today's the day. We're cutting oil tanks up, and we're we're getting rid of stuff. And I said, well, I said, I wanted to get it out of there for you. I said, but I couldn't move those boilers myself. And he said, we'll get it all loaded up. So dropped the rear end out of the truck, pulled over there next door, and loaded four oh, square body Chevy just went by C10 um, loaded four or five boilers I lost count um, loaded those uh, oil tanks that were cut in half filled with number one steel and um, man a lot of traffic usually nothing down there but um you seen it. You seen it. It was a mess of stuff. So now, my plans changed. Now I just went. I said I'm just going to go to the regular scrapyard because I got number one steel, you know, up the ass on that thing, and then just give them the title, turn in that truck, the cab, and the chassis for whatever. Don't matter at this point. So we loaded all that stuff on there, and uh, it was a horrible horrible ride I had to get I didn't have enough straps in the truck to strap that stuff down they were all in my other truck and trailer so the wife came down brought me a whole pile of straps strapped everything down but on the bump I had to take of course I took the back roads because I wasn't getting on 95 with that monstrosity of madness but um the straps kept loosening up, and uh, there was a few problems along the way. But anyway, got it down there, and uh, you know, it turned out to be not a bad little payday. And uh, I guess you know, sometimes what's that old saying? You know, when life gives you lemons, I don't know. But what turned from an angry toe of a truck that had no value and just was just not not a good one at all, you know, to, wow, you know, I get the differential installed, all in, it's all done, you know, it was a huge thing, all done, and uh, then... They took the backhoe and they loaded all that stuff right on that truck for me. I mean, it was great. Just great. A bad situation turned into a good one. So, on to the money. So there you go. Not a bad little day. I pulled in at a whopping 14,100 pounds. That was everything. Then I had almost 3,000 pounds of number one prepared. 180 bucks. Then 3,660 pounds of light iron, which was the truck and that furnace and another boiler that he called light because I didn't didn't take off the sheet metal casing, which whatever. Um, and there was there was one boiler inside the truck that they stuffed in. So there you go. Now, man, I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. The day's over. And uh, I think I'll sleep good tonight. <laughs>